Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, I'm working on a small design at the moment and I thought I'd just share with you a little glimpse of what it uh, goes into uh, actually designing something like this and searching for parts and it's real interesting I call it the design merry-go-round because once you hop on it you'll see it's very difficult to get off and you can spend a typical design engineer can spend a hell of a lot of time uh, just searching for parts in fact that's what they'll spend most of their time doing so let's take a look at it okay let's take a very quick look at the design here I won't go into details of what it is or what it does but we have a we have a micro here okay I'm gonna need uh, two uh, PWM channels I'm gonna need uh, a couple of ADC channels are uh, 10 bits or thereabouts maybe I can get away with eight I'm not entirely uh, sure now um, I need uh, 24 um, IO channels um, that includes uh, PWM and ADC for switches and um, uh, other various things so uh, 24 IO that's going to be a, um, a driving design criteria for the actual design because that will determine what package uh, what minimum package size um, I'm going to need for the design now over here okay I've got a load um, it doesn't really matter what it is but um, let's just say I have a load down here okay and then I have a, uh, a what I want is a high side uh, current monitor um, because I want to be able to measure the uh, um, I want to be able to measure the, uh, the the current flowing through the load so I, I need either a high side current monitor this is um, plus V up here it's what's called a high side current monitor or I could possibly uh, maybe even do it with a low side monitor down here like this and just tapping off into a differential um, amp or even a single ended amplifier down here but there's um so there's various ways I can do this and depending upon the micro I choose um, and various other aspects will determine what parts which way I actually design this because I might find that these high side current monitors here are, are very expensive um, or I might find it's cheaper just to roll my own differential uh, amplifier and do it that way or I'm uh, there's a whole um, bunch and that's only two aspects to the design there are other parts but we're just going to look at basically the high side current monitor and the micro controller okay let's hop in this design merry-go-round shall we I've got four tools open here. First one's DigiKey, the next one's Mouser, next one is FineChips.com, and the next one is Octopart.com. I've mentioned all these before. Now let's start out with DigiKey, and let's start out with that uh, high side current monitor that we're talking about. So it's already there. I've already searched for stuff like that. So let's try DigiKey and a high side current monitor like that. There's 479 of them, current regulation and management. You've got to make sure you choose the right category there. Otherwise, um, you, a good idea is to choose the one with the most um, numbers on them there. So that one's got 479 items. That's only demo boards and things. So, But it gets more complex for other fields. Anyway, let's go in. I'm not too concerned. And here's the parametric data, okay? All this parametric data here is what you can use to uh, sort your parts, sort your parts down, because we're looking at 479 parts at the moment, and that's a lot. Um, now, I'm not real too concerned about the case and the package at the moment. Um, accuracy, oh, I'd like 2% or less. Let's say 2.5% or less. So let's highlight that and go apply filter, and it looks like here we go. We've got 255 items now that's still quite a lot so let's go in stock parts only apply filter and 62 items that's very manageable so let's go into view page and see what we've got here um, now you might have to scroll off the side here because often this can be very wide um, to get the price over here but uh, as you can see it's given us a whole bunch of parts um, most of them are a diodes Ink and ZTEX 
brand. Um, now there are uh, ZTEX make good little parts. I've used them before, so I'm happy with that. Um, now let's uh, look, look at price here. I mean, I'm looking at um, things like a dollar, uh, two dollars twenty-eight each, um, sixty-eight cents in three thousand quantity. Now DigiKey they do actually sort. Uh, by price here, but it's not as good as Mouser because um, it, it intermixes quantities and all sorts of stuff in there. I'll show you later that Mouser is actually better uh, to search for if you really want um, price. But that looks like what we're up for for a high side uh, current monitor is uh, roughly maybe um, you know 80 cents. Let's let's go in and take a look at one, um, shall we? Let's take a look at the. Uh, 1010 part here and um, that's a SOT23.5 package I'm fairly happy with that um, and look the price breakdown for 100 quantity is like 94 cents that isn't too bad so we're probably up for 80 cents to a dollar for a high side uh, current monitor now that's a that's you know that's a fair chunk of my uh, price budget for this thing because it's like half the price um, of the microcontroller I'm going to be using, which might be the most one of the most expensive parts. So it's a quite an expensive little beast. But um, and we can go straight in and jump straight to the data sheet and actually check out the part. And uh, it's hard to get this in frame um, here, but uh, let me try. There we go, and it's we've got a simple um, high side uh, current monitor there. It's got a single resistor, it's got a current sense resistor external, and it just senses that and gives you a uh, current output which you convert to a voltage by putting a single resistor there, and that's very nice. That's that's pretty much exactly what I want. Um, supply voltage 2.5 volts to 20 volts. Uh, perfect for this application although the minimum side here 2.5 volts means I probably can't use it on the lower side hence hence the name really it's a high side current monitor but uh, I'll go into that later so that looks like a suitable part I'm quite hop happy with that I think we've found a generic high side current monitor now let's just do one more additional thing here for the high side current monitor. As you can see, Diodes Inc. and ZTEX are, are the major manufacturers down in the price category. Linear technology down here, but they're like, ouch, five bucks a pop. That's really expensive. But let's just double check this on Mouser, shall we? Uh, high side current. Well, let's just search for high side current and semiconductors down here as you can see integrated circuits power management ICs that's it down there and current and power monitors and regulators as you can see 55 don't choose any of the others because well they're obviously they've got a lower uh, parts count number which means that um, then it's not really what you want to look for so current and power monitors and regulators let's go into that and Let's see what now. Good thing about Mouser is that Mouser allows you to um, actually sort by price here. So if you hit this button here, okay, we've got uh, how many parts have we got? We've got 55 parts um, just up front, so not as many as uh, we got from DigiKey. But here we go. It's once again the ZTEX ones or Diodes Inc. have popped up with um, the ZX. CT series again, they look like the cheapest. There's an Ixus one down here. Let's see what they um, they're, they're like a dollar each in quantity. The ZTEX ones are a bit cheaper. Um, look, oh, there you go, 83 cents. So that's cheaper than DigiKey. So I like that. The uh, Let's go for the 1009, shall we? Let's check. Oh, look, it's a SOT. 23.3 package as opposed to the SOT 23.5 that we had before. So let's look at the data sheet for that and check it out. Yep, that one's much simpler. It's only a three pin uh, package. Much, much easier. And as you can see, it's the same voltage range, 2.5 to 20 volts, which is perfect for the application. 1% typical accuracy and a nice, um, easy to use SOT 23.5 package it's not too small it's easy to hand solder um, and we'll go into the uh, you know I need to investigate the technical specs and stuff like that but 
definitely I found I'm going to stick with that as a first shot um, I'm going to use this model as my high side current monitor now just as a double check when I choose a part like that what I'm going to do is I'm then going to use fine chips or octo part to see the price so I just copy and paste the part number I put it into fine chips and it'll search all the different manufacturers um, well, I shouldn't have hit that and here they are Mouser there we go 83 it shows you um, it uh, doesn't show you it usually shows you if you have if they have stock and if we go over here they're actually on order they're not actually in stock so the 1009 in the SOT 23 package um, is not in stock from there but I think we could probably get it from Mouser anyway uh, finechips.com uh, it's available from future they have no stock um, quest components have 79 um, so it's it's available from not available from digikey it says actually but if you search for the more generic number take out the FTA on the end you'll find that you get more hits there we go um, in stock there we go mouse I have that uh, in stock and you can get direct links straight to the mouse website so if I hit that it'll actually take me straight there again once again that's not the SOT 23.5 package but um, still they, they have that in stock and as you can see um, it's 98 cents from Arrow Newick have don't have any stock but it's reasonably priced from them as well uh, DigiKey actually have it in stock there it is so if we hit that we can jump straight to the relevant DigiKey page once again it's not the SOT 23.5 package but um, I can optimize that later but so I just wanted to show on here that uh, when you when you're picking a part it's good just to go to fine chips or octo part so that you can um, find it to actually see if that part is actually available um, uh, from different suppliers or not and 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 at what price so that's very important criteria when you're optimizing your design for price and availability okay let's try the same thing again but now we want to find our microcontroller I'm going to go straight to mouser this time and I'm going to type in microcontroller now um, you could argue that I should have done the microcontroller first but um, it doesn't really matter now semiconductors down here we've got microcontrollers and microprocessors there's the category I want 27,000 parts fantastic um, a subcategory microcontrollers yes 19,000 parts which is really quite amazing when you think about it now here we go I can limit it to just a particular manufacturer so if I'm you know a fan if I want to use a microchip part it's 7,600 if I want to use Atmel there's 2,100 up there but I don't I'm not fussy about the manufacturer at this stage what I am fussy about is uh, price and package and pin count pin counts very important because I don't want one with too few and I don't want one with too many because pins because the package will be too big now so I know I've got 24 I need a minimum of 24 IO so I'll go to number of programmable IO on the parametric search here and this is the great thing about parametric search now um, I probably might be able to handle say up to 40 pins say a 44 pin PLCC package or um, a quad flat pack or something like that so I'll go from 24 to 40 and I'll apply the filter and we've got 19,000 parts at the moment we're down to 5,600 okay you know we're getting down there but even with 5,600 DigiKey allows you, uh, sorry, Mouser um, allows you to once again come down here and just bang sort from lowest to highest price. So let's take a look. Curious curiosity, which uh, manufacturers are going to show up? Well, microchip uh, right up the top. That's not surprising with a PIC 16F59 uh, part, and that's a dollar 32 in hundred quantity. Um, but look at that. There's an NXP. Uh, Cortex 32-bit ARM processor down there but look at the package don't like it at all um, I'm not very happy with that and really microchip there's a couple of freescale ones down here NXP but um, you know microchip really um, do show up there so I'm gonna show and I know microchip is some of the cheapest micros on the market but we'll try Atmel 
later but let's go up and just limit our search to microchip now what's once again the 16f59 now I know from memory that that one's actually not going to do the job it doesn't have the um, ADC and oh I don't think it has the ADC and the PWMs I need and stuff like that the 16f722 that might do the job okay now what uh, package is that in if we scroll over here it's an SSOP package uh, not too happy with that there's a SOIC 28 yep there we go that one's available in SOIC 28 so I like that let's look at the um, 16 uh, F722 if we open the data sheet let's check it out um, now what have we got here let's zoom in and uh, we've got um, oh, look at that. The analog to digital converters, only 8 bit resolution. It does have an internal voltage reference, but 8 bits really isn't going to cut it for me. I really need, uh, you know, say 10 bits or something like that. 12 is a bit overkill, but I could maybe get away with 8, but I really want um, 10. Now, um, so that, that really rules it out, even though um, there's two PWM modules down here, so it meets my requirements for the number of PWM modules. Let's scrap that because that part is not suitable at all. It doesn't have the ADC. Now let's go down. Aha, there's another one. Pick 16F822. Let's check that out, shall we? The 882. There we go. Let's let's try that one. The 882. So let's go in here and check it out. Now, AD converter. There we go. 10-bit resolution, 1114 channels. I only need a couple of channels, so... Um, that's fine, but it's 10-bit resolution. Now, does it have the number of PWM channels? Capture, compare, PWM module. Um, there's a 16-bit one down here. Enhance, capture, compare. 10-bit uh, PWM with one, two, or four output channels. Fantastic. So, um, it basically, there's a suitable microchip part there. I, I like it. I'll use the, um, I probably need the 884 or something like that. You'll have to go into packages uh, later here we go if we go over here um, let's say the 884 and I need about 4k of flash memory it's got some e squared prom which is great it's got 35 IO it's got uh, uh, two 8-bit timers plus a 16-bit timer which is the PWM as well so bingo I think I found a suitable microchip part for my design the 16F88 uh, 388 well 88x series um, I need to go into more details than that but off the bat um, that looks like a very suitable uh, part and it's only a dollar 81 each in hundred quantity excellent now because I'm optimizing this design for price I don't just want to limit myself to microchips so let's hit the back key here and let's go down to Atmel because I have the tools for Atmel and I don't mind Atmel so let's go there's 695 parts from Atmel, and let's, once again, it's all it's already sorted by price, yes, as you can see. Little button there. Now let's take a look at uh, what we've got here, the AT Tiny 48. Now, it's a $1.63, which is a bit cheaper than the microchip one. It's Oh, that's in a PDIP package, but it's available in a TQFP 44. That's adequate, so it's got the correct... Uh, number of IO I need and it's got 4k of flash memory so let's take a look at that the AT tiny 48 and hey, here it is okay whoops now uh, what do we got here we got um, yeah we got e squared prom that's enough I only need a few we've got 4k or 8k uh, we've got um, uh, six or eight channels of 10-bit ADC. Great. Um, now, the Atmels have this ADC noise reduction mode as well, uh, which can be handy. So um, that's really good. Now, so it has the ADC I need, but uh, does it have the... Um, oh, look at that. It's available in a 32-lead TQFP. Fantastic. Um, that's a nice-sized device. But does it have the PWMs? Um, on chip programmable where are we it doesn't really uh, one 16-bit timer counter one 8-bit timer counter um, oh, I might have to drill 
further down into the details. It's it's really quite annoying when it doesn't tell you up front what the uh, what the parts actually have. Okay, now let's try that again. Let's go to Atmel because I want to uh, use their parametric search on their website because I'm not going to um, get as great a parametric search typically on DigiKey or Mouser as you can get uh, in the individual manufacturer's website. So let's go into their microcontrollers, AVR 8-bit 32. It's not the world's best uh, website. Let's go into devices and here we go, parametric table. So let's go into the parametric table for their microcontrollers. Now we only want let's say the tiny range of AVRs um, because really um, my my design is tiny so their name is quite apt. Now here's the tiny here's all the tiny AVR devices down here and they fit on one screen which is pretty excellent but you have to scroll right across if you want to see packages and things like that. Now once again the parametric search is really good because you can sort by number of IO pins so let's do that shall we let's sort search sort from uh, highest to lowest on the IO pins oops it's done it the other way around anyway um, the only AT tiny device we've got um, is the 24 or 28 IO perfect it's available in a TQFP 32 as we saw on the uh, Mouser website, fantastic. So the AT Tiny 48 looks like a very suitable part, but uh, let's go over to here where PWM channels. Okay, down here. Oops, there we go. One PWM channel. That's no good. Um, so I have to rule out that AT Tiny device. What a shame, because um, that was that was really cheap part um it just doesn't have the PWM channels now if it looks like every other AT tiny device with the exception of that one um, has at least two PWM channels so I don't know why these AT tiny 48s only have one ah oh, what a shame ah oh, well you can't always win anyway let's look at some of the others but the others um, in the number of pins down here it's only got 18 IO the max number of I.O. pins. That's just not enough. So I really, um, Atmel, it looks like off the bat, do not have a suitable part in their AT tiny range for my design. I just can't get the I.O. I need with the number of PWM channels. What a shame. So let's go to the AT Mega uh, range up here. But I know the AT Mega range are more expensive. Um, so let's uh, look at the number of I.O. down here. These packages down here, they've all got the uh, PWM channels. Oh, these ones here don't have any PWMs at all. But everything else, it looks like there's none with just one PWM channel, like in the AT Tiny range. So that's really good. But um, the AT Megas, even if we go for, say, an AT Mega 8, um, which I know is one of their lower sort of end parts or the 8a I think it is it's only got 8k of flash it's a bit it's a bit overkill but um, it's got three PWM channels so let's go to the AT mega 8a uh, and take a look at that um, in fact I, I know it's going to do the job uh, pretty much but um, it's in a TQFP 32 package fantastic um, I know it's got the PWMs and ADCs I need, but uh, let's go in and look at um, to see what the actual prices are. So let's go in and search for the AT Mega 8A on finechips.com and let's take a look. Mouser and Newark have it. Mouser have it at a dollar sixty-eight, but that's a seven hundred and eighty pricing. They don't actually have it. Uh, in stock and if you look at Newark, Newark are usually pretty well priced for their parts but look uh, for a one to uh, for a hundred to two nine nine it's two dollars fifty five it's it's more expensive than the equivalent microchip part so I think that's just you know you, you're paying more for that extra four kilobytes internal flash and it's just it's a bit too expensive a dollar ninety nine down here from Arrow but they don't have it in stock 18 weeks lead time yeah blow it out my ass really um, so uh, that's a that's a real shame. So it looks like um, uh, the 18 megas range have probably priced themselves out of this gig. Now I can maybe squeeze in one of the 80 tiny. 
parts uh, if I look at um, limiting or redesigning my I.O. architecture to actually uh, change to limit the number of I.O. So I can use like an external um, serial uh, 74HC serial chip to actually um, to minimize the number of I.O. And I might be able to then use one of these smaller uh, AT tiny parts like maybe the AT tiny 4313 down here. Um, that's got 18 I.O. So I might be able to squeeze that one in. But you've got to weigh up the cost of that and the benefits versus that external chip compared to the microchip, uh, the actual microchip design. So that extra external chip might cost you an extra, you know, 20 cents or something like that. And you have to weigh those sort of things up and extra board space as well. Now there is something that I did remember though, uh, I've used the AT Tiny 26 part before. It looks like it's no longer available, uh, but it looks like they do have a 261 a, which is the upgrade to that, or the 461A, which is the 4K part. Now, let's look at that uh, for a second, because I know this had a rather interesting aspect to it. Uh, let's let's open the data sheet here. Okay, here we go, the AT Tiny 261A. Now, what it's actually got, let's have a look here. Yeah, three high-frequency PWM outputs, excellent. Okay, so it's got the number of PWMs. But uh, check this out, it's not only does it have a 10-bit ADC, 11 single-ended channels, but it's got 16 differential ADC pairs, so it's actually got differential amplifier in there. And this is really fantastic for uh, this sort of design I'm doing, which has um, high side or current monitoring, because um, basically what you want is a differential amplifier across the current sense resistor and it's also got programmable gain check it out times one times eight times 20 and times 32 now that's really inviting um now unfortunately though it's only available with 16 io lines so it's very limiting it's a 20 pin um soic package so it, it doesn't meet the number of ios which is a real shame but I might be willing to go back and look at my design to see if I can make use of uh, the uh, the differential AD, the differential ADC and the programmable gain because I might be able to completely eliminate my high side current monitoring chip. Now the AT Tiny four six one. Let's go and take a look at that uh, price wise from Fine Chips. AT Tiny 461A, and let's have a look. Mousa, it's a uh, dollar eighty-eight for six hundred and ninety pricing, so it's not it's not too bad at all. Now, as you saw in that, we found that um, this high side current monitor is going to cost like um, maybe eighty cents to a dollar or something like that, or really, you know, 80 cents it's going to cost, and that's that's half the cost of this micro, which is which is crazy, really. So I'm going to have to go into details to see whether I can use a spare op amp, because I know I'm going to have one op amp left over. I've got like a quad op amp uh, package in the design, and there's going to be one spare, so maybe I can do a low side current sense or something like that, but the problem with that is that... Um, then it actually raises this voltage here uh, by the voltage drop in the resistor. And that can be about 0 0.1 volts or something like that, because I want to use a 1 ohm in the current. Anyway, uh, the details aren't really important, but um, I don't know if I can actually do this low side um, current monitoring because of this uh, increased voltage here. I might be able to do some weird arrangement with the grounds. So this, um, this ADC, uh, ground I might be able to you know uh, uh, tie into here but the power ground I might be able to tie into there or something like that but I've got to look into all those details but um, yeah you know, 80 cents for that little part I'm, I'm a bit offended by that really so um, I'm gonna to have to you know I, I might have to use it but uh, there's a you know it's the design merry-go-round just reiterate this design and I'm only looking at uh, you know, two aspects to it. It's crazy.
So even though this was a quick example, as you can see, um, I've spent a lot of time in these param using these parametric search tools and uh, these uh, price comparison, price and availability websites, and they're all very powerful tools that allow you to optimize your designs uh, for whatever requirement you're after, be it um, uh, price, availability, package, size, performance, uh, things like that. There's no end to these. And I've only used two parts as an example, the high side current monitor and the microcontroller. And I can assure you, I, you know, I haven't finished this uh, search. It could go on for days um, where I optimize my design and then I reiterate my design based on things that I find uh, on these website suitable parts. I, I might even even add in a part to my design. By doing that, I might be able to reduce the cost or I might consolidate uh, parts to reduce the cost. Or I might find that one package is, you know, it's a, only available in a horrible BGA part or something like that. So I can't, I, I don't really want to use that in my design. And it just goes on and on. This design merry-go-round, it can you can it can be an end unto itself un, unto itself. It really can. It can get crazy and you can get so caught up in it, even for a basic design. I mean, uh, you know, if you're just designing something that has um, you know a, a very basic requirement you're just going to make one of then you probably wouldn't care about this you wouldn't care about uh, cost or anything like that uh, you wouldn't you know you just get the easiest to use package but uh, there are other designs where you can spend uh, days and weeks just mucking around with all these tools and really uh, a design engineer's job you might think is drawing circuits and laying out stuff no it's not probably 80 percent of your time, I just pulled that number out of my ass, but it's going to be quite high. Uh, you know, 80, 90 percent of your time might be spent just doing these parametric searches and bill of materials and optimizing your cost and all sorts of things. It's just one big merry-go-round and once you hop on, it can be difficult to get off.